All right, class. First up, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to be talking about oligopolies and monopolies. And um, last class, I told you guys what a monopoly was. You know, it's uh, when a company basically owns all of one industry, whether it's you know bottled waters or pins. If one company owns all the companies that make pins, they own a monopoly. Okay, but the thing is, there's variations of monopolies. So that's what we're going to learn about today. Okay, so the objective today, we're going to analyze what industries might be considered an oligopoly. First, we're going to find out what it is, and then we're going to see which companies um, or what industries basically have a, an oligopoly. Then we're going to examine why price fixing and cartel agreements, why they are illegal in the United States. And then lastly, we're going to create an argument on whether the government should have a monopoly on things like mail, water, and, you know, rare, dangerous items. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the... So, here is your warm-up picture. Okay, the first question asks you to analyze the picture. And then, um, according to the artist, how do you think this billionaire made his money okay so look around his feet you'll see some stuff okay um there's some words so look at them see what they say that should really help you out and then the second question asks you to make a prediction do you think that the people below his feet will ever like fight back why or why not okay again it's a prediction what do you think OK, uh, so once you're finished with that, be prepared because we're going to be moving on to the notes. OK, so pause the video if you're still writing, which you should, probably should be. Um, but we're moving on in three, two. So an oligopoly, this is basically where a market structure in which there are very few sellers who dominate the industry. OK. Um, so the top owners, there's only so many of them. Now, they can make a bunch of products, but the owners, there's very few of them. Uh, a great example is like the auto industry. Okay, There's not like 50 or 100 different uh, car manufacturers around. It's basically like eight major ones around the world, you know, that create cars that people actually like buy and they sell them around the world and some of that um and the thing is with the oligopoly is that there are fewer sellers okay so there are fewer sellers but no one is really more powerful that they can control the market by themselves they can't change the output they can't change the sales and the prices of the product in the in the in the market you know, so like a car manufacturer, let's say GMC, they can't decide, oh, well, we're going to raise our prices $5,000. Well, okay, fine, you can do that, but your competition is going to lower theirs, maybe $2,000. So now there's a $7,000 difference, and people are going to be like, well, I'd rather buy this car. You know, GMC, they, they raise their way too high. You know, they don't have that power yet. Or basically, it's like we can raise the price and you either have to buy it or, you know, you're not going to have a new vehicle. So if there's still competition, strong competition, they cannot um, adjust the market. So oligopoly is, again, right smack in between a perfect competition, which we talked about last week, and a monopoly. And like I told you at the very beginning. Monopoly is when one industry owns all of one product. Okay. So other great examples of oligopolies is like the soda industry. Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Right. Like if you go to a, a restaurant or uh, let's say fast food place and you say, can I get a Pepsi? They might tell you, oh, we only sell Coke products. You know, if you look on the on the menu thing, they'll say right there, Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, Sprite, you know, and then there's a bunch of other ones. 
all those different sodas are owned by Coca-Cola. Same thing on the flip side with Pepsi. You know, if you ask for Pepsi, or Coca-Cola, they say, oh, we only have is Pepsi. And if you look on the menu, you see all these different um, stuff. Sierra Mist, Dr. Pepper, things, or not Dr. Pepper, I'm sorry. Di Diet Pepsi. All that's owned by Pepsi. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they are constantly fighting. Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Constantly fighting. Trying to take over, in a sense. Um, fast food places, too. You know, when you think of, like, uh, hamburgers, think of McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Jack in the Box, you know, things like that. in and out here in California, yeah, but elsewhere in the country, no, because it's only isolated to here. I believe Arizona, I think there's, like, one place in Texas. That's it. You can't get in, uh, uh, in and out anywhere else because it's a it's an isolated thing, okay? So price fixing is a pretty interesting thing. It's basically an agreement amongst the competitors to charge the same amount or similar prices of a product. Um, typically, they, use, they usually put the price above what the market is. So in 2006, about 20 airlines got together and they decided, you know what? Let's join together. Let's all raise our prices at the same level. And... Uh, you know, no matter what people choose, we're going to make money. So let's say a ticket costs like a hundred bucks. All these 20 airlines would raise the price to $120. So it doesn't matter which airline people chose, the airlines are going to make money. The problem is this is very illegal because the whole point of capitalism is to, for the competitors to fight each other to lower the price, which then benefits you and me, the buyers, you know, so these guys were fined millions of dollars and stuff like that, so, yeah, now the term cartel, a lot of you guys now think about, like, the drug cartels in, in uh, Mexico and Colombia and stuff like that, but it's actually an economic term, it means few of the sellers basically get together to run out the competition, okay, now, a cartel agreement is actually something pretty interesting. So instead of the like price fixing where the competitors get together and raise the prices so that all of them make money, what cartel agreement is, is they, a couple of cart, um, groups get together and they lower their price because they want to run out one competition. Okay, so that their prices of their product is low, that people will not go to that other competition. They'll be like, yeah, your price is too high. I'm going to go to this place. You know, these guys are cheaper. And that one, um, that one competitor, they know they can't lower their price anymore because then they'll be losing money and no company wants to lose money from the selling their products. So the thought is, hey, they'll go away. They'll disband. Um, problem is it usually does not work. Cartel agreements usually don't work because you have to remember these companies are always looking after themselves, you know, so usually one of them or both of them will break the agreement, you know, to basically help themselves. So let's say the competitor is about to go out of business and they're going to sell. One of them will automatically get out of it and out of the agreement and try to buy you know, or if one of them starts to lose money a little bit more than the other, hey, I'm out. You know, they they always think about themselves first. And because of that, um, these agreements usually don't last that long. Okay. Now we come to your first um, question. It says, what do you think is better for the economy? A variety is supposed to be of small stores or a handful of large stores in one market. So let's look at like a Walmart, right? So in your town, usually, you know, there might be like two or three Walmarts, right? Um, would it be better to have two or three Walmarts or to have like nine little, little, littler stores, smaller stores that are scattered about? 
What do you think? What would be better to have three big stores or to have like nine smaller stores, but you know, they're spread out a little bit more, you know, basically selling the same thing as like the Walmart, they're just smaller. So which one do you think is better for the economy and why? Okay, why do you believe this? All right, so go ahead, answer the question, uh, but we're moving on in three, two. So here's the thing, um, natural uh, monopoly, it's a very interesting thing. It's basically when the market, um, the cost of production is minimized because there's only one um, person controlling it. Now, I know that sounds weird and you've heard me say, oh, competition is good because the price, these guys fight and the price goes lower and lower, which is good for you and me. But in this situation, it's actually best that there's only one person who controls that industry. A great example is public utilities, telephones, water, natural gas, um, electricity. Because you could just imagine, you've seen these electrical towers, you know, about... Imagine if there was like five companies who were selling electricity. Instead of just being one of these things, you know, just in a straight line, there might be five of them just scattered about, you know, and the wires going every which way and stuff like that. Um, think of like the gas lines that are under the ground. You know, some as you guys know in your town, you know, people are the city workers are digging that stuff up, tearing up the up the uh, the roads to get to those pipelines and they might be changing them up. They might be making them bigger. There might be a leak and they're fixing it. But imagine like five companies having gas lines underneath and let's say one of them busts and it affects another one. These guys are going to be tearing up that road and stuff like that. So you could just imagine the chaos that's going to happen. You know, if, Five companies are working on the gas line. They have their own gas line all around town. It, it, it might be chaotic. Okay. Now this next one is one of my favorites. It's 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 interesting because it's I've seen it before. It's called geographic monopoly. This is a monopoly based on the absence of other sellers because of the geographical area. So. A great example is in the middle of the desert, there's one gas station and they have a sign saying there won't be another gas station for 200 miles. You see that you're immediately going to look at your gas tank going, oh, can I make it? I don't know. Either way, you're probably going to pull into that gas station because for one, maybe you have to go restroom, right? Maybe you can't hold it for another like three hours, two and a half hours, right? You might be like, well, I need something to eat, something to drink, you know. So you go, you're going to go in there, maybe get some gas. Um, and the prices will probably be, will more likely be higher. Because why? There's nowhere else you're going to get a soda or some snacks, you know. Or put, be able to put gas because the price is so, you know, or the bottles are so far away. You might not, you might not make it if you don't put enough gas. And you might be stranded in the middle of the desert. Who knows when the next person is going to drive through. So it is imperative that in things like that, in situations like that, you you have to be really careful and calculate, like, can I make it? And again, those people are going to raise the prices because what else, where else are you going to get gas? You know. Um, technological monopoly. It's a monopoly where it's based on the ownership or control of the manufacturing methods, the process, or the scientific advances. Okay. Um, before, back in the day, like Microsoft, or sorry, Apple was screaming, basically saying that Microsoft is creating a monopoly. They're trying to corner the market when it comes to the computer industry. Um, and then later on, when it comes, to, just like the picture shows with the iPod and the iPhone and some of that, they basically um, tried to rule it all. The MP3 players and some of that, you know, um, and they try to corner the market themselves years later. 
Okay. Now, a great example of this is again is when the government grants a patent. If you create something and you have the schematics and some of that, how it's built, and you get a patent for it, if some company tries to make something like yours or they steal try to steal your idea, um, you can sue them because you show you have shown that you have created this item, you patented it, so you're taking you're taking claim of it because you made it. Okay. All right. So in this part, you're gonna have to go to this website. All right. It's called listenwise.com forward slash teach events 1853 and type all that stuff in. It's gonna ask you to log in. So be sure you log in. So you get to create account. It's going to be like um, you're going to put your student, and then you're going to answer these questions. Now here's the thing though. If you try to answer these without listening to that, I'm going to know, because in that video they tell you which businesses they consider big tech. They tell you on that video. It's an audio. They tell you which companies are talking about when they say big tech. So if you try to be like, oh, I, 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 big tech to me is this company or this company, company, and that's not the one they're talking about, that's how I'll know that you didn't listen to it. You think you may know, but don't risk it. Go to that website, fill that thing out, and then answer the two questions. Okay. So. Pause the video, listen to that audio clip, and answer the two questions. Okay. So the last thing is the government monopoly. Now the government does have a monopoly on things. Okay. Um, a great example is your local water. The water you get from your fountain, from your showers, also that comes from the city. Okay. You can't get water from the Sani or Aquafina. You can't get a, a line of water from those companies to your house. Um, you know, that's not how it works. The city owns, you know, a uh, water treatment plant to where they take water, they recycle it, things like that. They clean it. Okay, so that's them. Same thing with the mail, the UPS. That's the government. They own that. Yeah, you might get packages from UPS, things like that, FedEx, but that's packages. These guys deliver the bills, the letters, things like that, you know. Um, and I, you know, the thing is, I've heard an argument of people saying, oh, well, the government's losing money. They're losing money. It's like, well, yeah, the UPS, it's not a money maker. It's a service. Same thing like firemen. Same thing with like police officers, same thing like the libraries. They're not there to make money. They're not there to make the government millions and millions of dollars or anything like that. It's a service to you and me. Okay. Uh, another good, good example is like the government basically um, takes control of stuff like uranium, plutonium, stuff that can be used for nuclear weapons. So if it's like in your backyard, the government will come in and take that instead of you digging it up, taking it, and you not knowing what it is, and you know, you might be exposed to harmful radiation, things like that. So you, you might be like face drooping, you know, you might have like a a, a third hand coming out because of the radiation. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different stuff that could happen if you just have this uranium or plutonium or whatever just laying around your house. Okay. Same thing with companies. If they find it and they, if they try to sell it, they get in really big trouble because again, that's the government's job to get it, secure it so that you, me, some company doesn't try to sell it. We don't get sick from it. Things like that. Okay. So here's my last question to you before, you know, the uh, exit ticket. Do you think that monopolies should be allowed? What would you say? All of them? Some of them? None of them? 
And like I said, the monopolies are the natural monopoly, geographic monopoly, technological gov uh, monopoly, or government monopoly. So if you say all of them, you're saying all of them should be allowed. If you say some, that's like maybe like two or three, maybe one of them. And you say none, it's basically none. So what do you believe? Should all of them be allowed, some of them, or none of them? And then why do you pick that? Why do you say that? And to back it up with your with their facts and claims, okay? So go ahead and start writing, but we're moving on in three, two. So here we are with your exit ticket. Now, um, remember, you're only going to pick one of these questions. The first one says, how would you explain what an oligopoly was to a 10-year-old? Now, here's the thing, guys. I noticed some of you guys, and I hope you're listening to this right now in the, in the video. Some of you guys I noticed are just straight copying stuff from Google. You know, you put like, I would tell a 10-year-old that oligopolies are entities in which that uh, few in the market, it's like entities, really? You've never used the word entities before. But somehow all of a sudden you're using it and i usually what i've done is i copy it and i put it on uh, google and bam there it is wikipedia there it is some website that's the first thing that pops up so if you guys do that if you copy from a website you will not get your points because my thing is how would you you explain it to a 10 year old and like a like a 10 year old's gonna know what an entity is or not so why would you use that word you know uh the next question says if price fixing and cartel agreements were legal in the u.s how do you think our country would be better or worse now again get that thought of the drug cartels out of your head okay we're not talking about drugs we're talking about the cartel agreements the definition of it if you have to go back to look at what it means, go back. Okay. They should not be, you, I should not read anything about the drugs and this and that. That, that, should, that is not part of this. Okay. The last one is should the government have a monopoly on things like mail, water, and rare, dangerous items? Why or why not? What do you think? Okay. So justify your answer. Once you are finished, that's it. You're done for this class, all right? So hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Um, next week we have a, another lesson, but when we come back from spring break is when we're going to start the uh, money management, the um, how to build credit, what credit is, stuff about loans, things like that. We'll be doing that when we come back from um, spring break. Okay. So you guys take care. You be safe. And I'll see you later. Okay.